All right, today we're going to be uh, solving multi-step equations. Uh, in this case, mostly just two-step equations. Uh, they're gonna, so we're going to solve equations involving one or more operation. We're going to basically be working backwards on these problems in terms of order of operations. What we would normally do last, we are going to get rid of first. So most of the time, we're going to start with removing, adding, or subtracting. And then we'll remove multiplication and division. There is an exception, and we'll go over the exception in just a little bit here. But understand, for the most part, we are going to get rid of the adding and subtracting first. Again, we want to work down with these problems, just like we've been talking about. Uh, the second thing that we're going to talk about also is solving consecutive integer problems. So those do come up in this section also. So let's take a look at a uh, first example. So here we have 5Q minus 13 equals 37. So there's two operations. There's a multiplication and a minus uh, 13 here. So we're going to again, solve for this Q here, we're going to work the operation backwards. So this minus 13 has to go first. So what's the opposite of minus 13? It's plus 13. So we're going to plus 13 to both sides. Simplify this. Those two minus 13 plus 13 eliminate each other. And so we're just left with the 5Q. 37 plus 13 is 50. And now we're down to just a single step here. So we're this is 5q, so that's 5 times q, so we have to do the opposite, or uh, divide by 5. So 5q divided by 5, 50 divided by 5, to both sides, and q equals 10. Now we can go ahead and check, check it by plugging it back in. Uh, but here's our next problem. 4a minus 42 equals 14, and this is done the, ops, the other way, where you just write the, what you're doing to both sides underneath. So I'm going to have plus 42 to both sides. And with that plus 42, these two cancel, leaving me just that 4a. The 14 plus 42 is 56. Then I'm going to divide by 4, and a equals 14. Moving on to another one. s divided by 12 minus 9. Notice this divided by 12 is just on the s. That's important. Uh, so we're still going to get rid of this minus 9 first. So the opposite of minus 9 is plus 9. So we're going to do that plus 9 to both sides. So negative 11 plus 9 is going to give us negative 2. And so it's s over 12 equals negative 2. And then we're going to multiply by 12 because that's a divide, so the opposite is multiply. So we're going to multiply by 12, and s equals negative 24. All right, here's the one that is the exception. Notice the difference between this problem and the one we just got done doing. a minus 9 divided by 2. The whole a minus 9 is underneath. Notice that the divide is over a minus 9, not just a. So this a minus 9, and then the whole thing is 2. This last one, just the s was divided by 12. So here, because it's all divided by 12, you must remove the divide first. So how do we get rid of the divide? We multiply. And then those two things will cancel out. So I multiply this side by 2 and this side by 2. Those two cancel out, and I have a minus 9, and this equals 12. So now i got to get rid of the minus 9, so I plus 9 to both sides, and a equals 21. We can even go ahead with letters and write it again. So we have two-thirds of a number. Of a number, remember, is multiplication. So two-thirds times a number, in this case I chose x, you could choose n or whatever number you want, plus 7, so plus 7 is negative 3, is equal to negative 3. So now i got to get rid of that plus 7. Uh, ooh, so that's a mistake here. This should be minus 7 to both sides. So minus 7 here would give us negative 10, not 4. And then two, dividing by two-thirds, uh, negative 10 divided by two-thirds is negative 15. So this answer should have been negative 15. Ooh, mistake. Oh, all right. So x equals negative 15. Please make that correction. All right, moving on. Now we need to talk about consecutive. Consecutive means in a row. So if I'm talking about consecutive integers, that's one, two, or three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on and so forth. 20, 21, 22. These are all consecutive integers. I can also have negative in a row. So negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, so on and so forth. 
Right, say consecutive odd integers, it's one, three, five, seven. All the odd integers in a row, obviously skipping the even ones. Or negative nine, negative seven, negative five. Even would be two, four, six, eight. Negative eight, negative six, negative four. All those different things. But consecutive means in, in a row. So the uh, all the odd numbers in a row, or all the even numbers in a row, or just all the numbers in a row, depending upon which way it says. Now, when you're doing consecutive integers, your first integer is always going to be x plus 0. The second one is x plus 1, x plus 2, and then x plus 3. Notice it only goes up by 1, because it only goes up by 1 each time we go here. So 1 to 2 to 2 to 3, 3 to 4, so on and so forth. For odd or even, now they both fit in the same category, because both of them go up by 2s. So 1 to 3 is up by like 2, 3 to 5 is up by 2, 5 to 7 is up by 2. Same thing with 2 to 4, 4 to 6. So it's x plus 0 and x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6. All right. You, these are going to be important when you actually do your problems, and I'll show you that in just a minute here when we actually do one of the problems. All right. So you need to have this kind of on hand just to make sure that you can go ahead and do these different problems. All right. So let's see what we got. Write an equation of a problem and solve the equation. Find three consecutive odd integers whose sum is 57. So the first one is just they're going to make it n. I made it x because we're odd integers. We're going to do this one x plus 0. The next one is x plus 2. The next one's x plus 4. They didn't put a plus 0 here, but you understand what that is. All right, so that's that's how they list it out. They again they used n instead of x. You know, we just had x x up here. All right. Either way is fine. So the sum of those three. So we're gonna have to add all of this together. How many n's do we have? And how much numbers do we have? We have three n's and six numbers. Is fifty seven. So here it here they're written out that way, but we have three n's and 6. So it's 3n plus 6 equals 57. Now it just is a problem for us to solve. So we got to get rid of the plus 6. So we minus 6 to both sides. 3n equals 51. Divide by 3. n equals 17. And again, notice how this is all straight down and it works very nicely. Now 17 is not the answer because I want three consecutive in, uh, odd integers. 17 is just the first one. So what would the next ones be then? The next odd integer after 17 would be 19 and then 21. So 19 and then 21. So we have 17, 19, and 21. All right, let's try one more. Find three consecutive integers whose sum is 84. So x plus 0, they're even integers. So I got the x plus 0, the x plus 2, and the x plus 4. There's three of them in a row. If there was four, I, I would do an x plus 6 next. How many x's do I have? I got three of them. Numbers here add up to be 6. So it's 3x plus 6 equals 84. Subtract 6. 3x equals 78. Divide by 3. And x equals 26. Again, that's the first one. So the next one is 28 and then 30. All right, I think we've got one more. Yeah. Write an equation of three consecutive integers whose sum is 0. So now we're going to integers. So we use the other chart. So 0, 1, and 2. So the numbers are a little bit different here. But what's the sum? The sum is equal to 0. So 3x plus 3 equals 0, minus the 3 from both sides. Th divide by 3, and x equals negative 1. So if I want 3 consecutive 1, and negative 1 is the first one, what's the next one bigger than negative 1? It's 0, and then 1. Okay, we're not going negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That's going smaller. We want to go bigger. Negative 1, 0, 1. That's always what you solve for is always the lowest one, the smallest one. All right. And that's what I have for you today.